I came across this story when I was doing some research on some stories about some men, missing men in Kentucky. And this one came up, even though he is from Virginia, but I still wanted to share his story. This is from the Charlie Project. The man's name is William David Dudley. He's been missing since October 31st, 1993, from Winchester, Virginia. He is white. He was 35 at the time of his disappearance. He would be 64 today. He's six foot. He's between six foot and six foot two, and weighs around 200 pounds. He has dark blonde hair and blue eyes. He nor he is normally known to wear a mustache and a beard, and sometimes a goatee. He wears eyeglasses, and he has a tattoo on his right arm of a cougar sitting on a log. He is known to everyone as Bill. He resided in a trailer in Martinsburg Pike in Winchester, Virginia in 1993. The property was owned by his girlfriend, Cindy, Brenner, Cindy Benner's grandmother, who re resided in the main house on the property. Cindy and Dudley had a daughter, and she lived in the home with the grandmother. Cindy said that he called her at around 9.30 p.m. on October 31st, 1993. He said he had been drinking and he was easily angered when he was intoxicated. She asked him not to walk down to the house, but he ignored her request and arrived at her door shortly afterwards. Dudley reassured Cindy that he was calm before she opened the door for him. He became angry after she allowed him inside the home and he hit her in the face, fracturing her nose. Cindy's grandmother woke up from the incident, as did the little girl. Roger Benner Jr. was one of Cindy's relatives. His friend Glenn Kearns resided in a mobile home on the same property and overheard the disturbance. They came to the house several minutes later and broke up the fight. The men had been drinking with Dudley earlier that day. Roger and Kearns fought with Dudley outside of the house and Kearns hit Dudley with a baseball bat. The two men left the area shortly afterwards. Dudley calmed down and apologized to Cindy. He attempted to wipe the blood off her face. Dudley and Cindy's mother did not get along. And he went back to his trailer, and he has never been seen or heard from again. Dudley left the area for short periods of time. He would always contact his mother shortly afterwards. Cindy checked his trailer several days after Halloween and noticed that his wallet, keys, and other belongings were inside on the table. She became concerned and called his mother. He, she believed he would return after he calmed down from the previous argument. Dudley's mother became concerned after her son failed to contact her for two weeks. She and Cindy visited several bars along U.S. Route 11 from the Virginia state line to Martinsburg, West Virginia, and placed posters in the area. His mother reported him as a missing person on December the 5th. Investigators interviewed Cindy, Roger, and Kearns regarding the disturbance. Kearns admitted that he hit Dudley with a bat, but both he and Roger claimed they never saw him after that. Their stories were consistent with Cindy's statements. Investigators believe that Dudley met with foul play the night of his disappearance. There are suspects in the case, but there have not been any arrests. Dudley's loved ones said that he had an alcohol problem in the early 1990s, but they described him as being a kind person and a good worker. Dudley was born in Alexandria, Virginia. His family relocated to Woodbridge sometime afterwards. He, he resided in Spartanburg, South Carolina with his father and stepmother. In 1979, he married and had three children with his wife, but they separated in 1985 and he began dating Cindy. Dudley and his wife divorced, but they remained close friends. 
He was employed as an auto body repairman at a Clearbrook used car business in 1993. His remains have never been found and his case is unsolved. Um, well, my guess, and this is just a guess, this is from Facebook. I'm going to see what this has to say. But my guess would be the altercation between he and his friends probably went a little farther than anybody is saying. It's possible that this guy hit him in the head with the bat and he went home and passed out on the couch with a concussion and maybe he bled to death or maybe he died from this head injury. And maybe she, the girlfriend, got these other two men to help her. Or it's possible that he stumbled off, but his keys and things being in the house. Now, he could have taken those and put those in the house before he ever went to her mother's house, before this argument broke out. This was dated October the 27th, 2017. Crime report from the Eastern Panhandle of West Virginia. William David Dudley has been missing for 24 years this Halloween. We are having the local news broadcast this to remind people we need to get his story out there. Um, the family is tired of no one doing anything about this. It's time to stand up and put an end to this. We want to be able to give him the proper burial and find out who is involved so they can be prosecuted. So as of today, I've not seen any updates saying that anyone has ever been arrested or where is Bill Dudley? This is from DC News Now. Dudley was last seen near his girlfriend's home in Clearbrook. His girlfriend, Cindy Benner, shared a house with her grandmother and the daughter she shared with Dudley. He lived in a trailer further away from the house. Benner's nephew and a friend shared a trailer on the same property. Investigator Jared Nell with the Frederick County Sheriff's Office says Dudley was reportedly partying with his neighbors the night of the disappearance. Investigators were later told that Dudley called Benner, who told him not to come to the house because he had been drinking. But he went anyway, and an argument broke out. Basically, that's it from there. The stories are very consistent, but there's no information about what may have happened. There is a video on this. Um, his mother is speaking about... They hit him over the head, the back of the head and shoulder, with a baseball bat, she says... They just, they said he shook his head like that, and that was all. Like it didn't really hurt him, but nobody has seen him since. Dudley's daughter, Crystal Dudley Albert, remembers a different scene the night her father disappeared. Okay, let me explain this. This is the daughter he has, but not with this, this Cindy. She was staying at his girlfriend's mother's house, I feel like I blame myself because if I would have told somebody what happened that night, maybe they would have found out more. But I was a scared kid, she says. She remembers the two men came into the house after fighting with her father, threatening to kill him. We were downstairs in the basement, and one of the men that got into a fight with my dad came in with a bloody nose. He was very angry and yelling, she said. He said, I need to call my dad because the only way to get rid of him is to kill him. She says she did not immediately tell investigators what she heard, something that haunts her to this day. While the family waited for many years for answers, they now believe Dudley died that night. What they want is closure. I go and talk to my mom at her gravesite says his mother, I have no grave site to talk to my son. I just want to be able to give him a proper burial because God will punish the people that did it. But after 25 years, 
it looks like that we would have some hope. I'll never stop. I'm never going to give up because I feel like if I don't, then who is going to? Anyone with any information is asked to contact the Frederick County Sheriff's Office at 540-662-6168. You may also contact Crime Stoppers. Um, my personal opinion after hearing this part of the story is that there was more to this than was being told. I believe that the argument broke out between the this Bill Dudley and his friends before he went home. Whatever had happened at the house after he went to his girlfriend's house, um, I don't know. But the fact that these two men just happened to show up there could it be that they followed him there because they wanted to continue this fight, this argument that they were having with him? Or did this CND or the grandmother or someone who was at the home that night call them? They say that they could hear the fight going on from where they were at, so they came up to see what was going on. That could be true. Whatever happened, I personally... My personal, this is just my personal opinion. I know a lot of people that make these videos withhold their own personal opinions, but I make these videos just based from my own point of view about it. And I think that um, the head, the, the ball bat to the head, probably, they say he just shook his head, shook it off like it didn't hurt. But it could be possible that they hit him more than once, or maybe even more than twice, and... The fact that they were fighting and there was already blood there. And, and in 1993, I doubt that they... Uh, it, it doesn't sound like the police really went to bat here to find out what was going, what really went on. It's so strange to me, though, you know, because sometimes I watched a, an episode of some Dateline or one of those types of shows the other night. They brought this woman in, and within an hour of just talking to her, they were interrogating her. And why is it that some cases they really push, and others they just say, okay, let us take a statement, and that's pretty much it. We're not going to really force anybody to tell more. I mean, you had... Three, at least three witnesses here, if not more, because the grandmother was also a witness. That was four. You had at least three suspects here, the the girlfriend and the two friends. The grandmother would have been a possible suspect. Did Were these people... It says that their stories were all consistent, so I'm guessing that they were all interviewed and, and questioned about this, you know. There's a difference between interviewing somebody and getting their statement and questioning them. So I don't know which one they did here, but the family still has no answers and whatever happened to this man... Um, my guess is that he was probably disposed of that night. I wouldn't know where to begin to say were, but, you know, I, I think I would start close to that property. I appreciate everybody for listening.